And we're here um, backstage with um, Hawk Catchum. Uh, he is a member of the Grand Ole Opry and um, has had countless amount of hits. And um, we are lucky enough to get to spend a few minutes with him tonight. How you doing, Howard? Harry? How are you? Um, it's a great pleasure. So um, tonight you're um, kind of like starting. Well, not tonight you're starting, but you're you you're coming back. I mean, you took a hiatus. I did, yeah. I took about two years off because I couldn't play and uh, couldn't sing. And uh, I kind of stopped writing songs. And then uh, I just uh, decided the only way to get out of the hole was to put the shovel down and get with it. So here I am. But it didn't just come like that. You worked hard to get back to where you are. I kind of did, yeah. I mean, I had to learn to tie my shoes walk and little things like that. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you got a good attitude. Uh, what do you, what, you got two choices, I think, personally. <laughs> you, can, you can keep going, or you can fold it up, fold your tent up. So I'd rather just keep going. So you're, um, you're writing again? I am. I'm just, I'm actually, uh, I just signed a, a record deal with uh, Music Road Records in uh, Austin, Texas. And I've written nine songs and uh, went in the other day and recorded four more. And, and what Kenny Grimes and I do guitar vocal of everything. And then we find the songs we like and get with it. So I'm about a month out right now from going in with a full band and cutting a new record. Wow. That's exciting. Um, so, so we have no release date. We have no idea when that's it's no, kind of far. No, no. Totally yeah. The first thing is to get it cut and get it get it polished and get it right, and then we'll uh, turn it back to the label and they can determine when. I'm thinking maybe midsummer. Okay. Yeah. That takes time. Yeah, it does. Yeah, sure it does. So um, you are uh, a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. And it's not that many people. And it, I, I thought there was far more people in the Grand Ole Opry than... It's like 70-something? 70, 70. I, I was the 71st member. And there were posthumously, I mean, there are people that are passed along me. But I, I actually uh, celebrated my 20th anniversary as a member of the Opry. Last weekend, I flew to Nashville. And, uh, Valentine's Day. Yes. You performed there. Mm -hmm. You performed at the Rhyme, the new one? No, no, we went to the Opry House, not the Rhyme. Uh, but uh, a wonderful experience. Um, it's my family. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it's the one place I can go where I see legends walking the hallways. From Bill Anderson to Ricky Skaggs to all the way to Brett Paisley to uh, it's just in, there's an essence there of real family, real community. Uh, people that have done this, I think, for the right reasons for a long time. That place has a lot of history. I remember I, uh, I was there one time and I was told that um, Hank Williams Jr. used to, like, in between songs, would sneak across the alley and go to Tootsie's. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Have a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, by all means. It's easy to do. Oh, yeah, it's really no, close. It's, uh, I've counted it. It's 27 steps. Is it really 27 steps? Wow. Um, uh, so, on a, um, on a on a sad note, um, we were we were lucky enough to uh, get a chance to spend some time with Ray Price. We were actually at his 87th birthday, mm. and actually Gina got to cut the cake. Mm. So, um, and so we were really blessed that we got to spend some time with him, got to talk to him, um, and I know that you felt you felt. Uh, akin to him as well. I had the opportunity to be around him and I wrote a poem actually and put it on my website uh, called The Cherokee Cowboy in honor of Ray. 
uh, he was a cat. I mean, you know, th these are guys that, that did this work. Now, we live in a fairly cushy world. We, we can get on the phone, on the cell phone. We can, uh, these guys were on, if they were lucky, they were on buses. For a long time, they were not. They were, they were on traveling interstates. Before there was an interstate, they were traveling back roads, any road to get to a gig, and driving all the way back to get home. Uh, at life, the cost of life and limb, sometimes. And tough warriors, they were just all warriors. And, and when you left a hit on the road, you really were separated. Like now, with the computers and with cell phones and Skype, you, yeah. you're connected. I mean, you could stay connected. Pretty much. If you were lucky you had a, uh, you could find a payphone every 400 miles. Yeah, different world. These guys were tough as leather. And funnier than heck. Really? Ray was a very funny. Yeah, fantastic sense of humor. Wow. Similar to Willie in some way. So you, uh, he's a legend, you know? Um, he's a legend and we had a, we got a blood on his radar, but we were felt really honored that we were able to have that at least, you know. Yeah. Um, because there are certain people that stand out, and he's definitely one of them. Absolutely true. Um, so as as a personal, uh, I'm you know, I'm personally a very big fan of yours, and um, one of the things I love about your music is that your s songs are almost like stories put to music. Because a lot of writers do it the other way around. They write the music, they put a story to it, and they go, well, what's going to rhyme with, rhyme with grind? You know? Yeah. So, Moon, Spoon, June. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, my, no, my approach is the curtain opens. I get a thought. Uh, Harlan Howard was a dear friend of mine, and, and I said, how do you do this work? And he said, uh, I hold the pen, God writes the song. It's a matter of, it's an interesting kind of way of channeling things to me. It's not about charting a record, having a hit record. That's, that's, a, that's a mill worker's mentality for me. You know, there are a lot of young people really gifted that do it very well. But I'm not really interested in, in writing a, a song that uh, you can aim towards summer. This must be a summer song. This must be a, you know, I, I just sit by. I'm very fortunate in that sense. I've never worried about where it's going, who's going to cut it, who ain't. Uh, I just write it. It's more true that way. I well, mean, you're not also forcing it. And then, quite frankly, I'm very, you know, maybe uh, I go through this book, you know, cutting this new record, and, and uh, there are some real strong songs in there. And there's some other stuff that just ain't. But you've got to write every day from and from my my approach anyways, you have to write every day. I write every day. Really? If I have an idea, if I have an observation about you know, the rain dripping off the trees and leaving rings in the creek, then I go, okay, that's something. That's a documentation for me. And it might it might become actually it might become a song, it might become a good song. At least I, I you know. God edits a lot of them. So you work through God. In, I work through various gods, I guess. Is that right to say? Of course. You know, I work through the ground. I work through, you know, uh, bird song. I work through, uh, I wrote a melody the other day and I closed the gate on my place and uh, it's, I need the oil and I'm not going to because it has a melody to it. It has a four note melody to it. So I went inside and laid that four note melody down and then a song that comes out. You know, the universe whispers to us. That can't be low. No, I don't believe so. I think I got dropped on my head when I was really young. My mama was washing me in the, in the sink and dropped me on my head. So I don't know where this comes from. Which still thought to be a good thing. So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so, yeah, so the thing about um, Writing music is, you just do what's in your heart, what you, what things you notice. So it's real life, mm -hmm. it's real life experiences. Yes, Not right. like uh, we're in the middle of a war and we're going to write about Vietnam or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
I guess that is real life, but I mean, things have happened to you and you experience. You know. Well, if I've been there, I'll write about it. Uh, I'm old enough, I'm 60 years old and I've seen a lot and uh, I can recall things. I can recall tender moments with other people. I can recall harsh moments with other people and, I, and they'll lead me to a song invariably. I, I don't push it. You know, I, I've written myself a several good songs <laughs> because I thought, well, this would be good for George Jones and this would be good for Garth Brooks and this would be good for Sunset. I mean, I don't do that. So you get halfway into a song, and you can you can you can literally watch the song disappear if you don't watch it. So, so I try to finish the work. I try to sing the work well. Uh, that's about all we get. Uh, well, you are quite a talent. You uh, you have one of the purest voices, uh, you know, in recording history as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. And many other people feel the same way. Um, and um, to be able to express yourself, it's it's uh, it's a lot. Of, a lot of people wish they could do that. Well, you know, and make a living doing what you love. Yeah. Well, I think everybody should get the opportunity to do that. Just, you know, just do something you really like. I don't care what it is. Just do it. You know, come home happy. Never argue with someone before you go to bed. Take it easy. You know. Easy, easy, good. Those are good words. Sounds like a song. <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, great. <laughs> Give us a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> thank you. Well, Hal, thank you very much for your time. We really thank appreciate you, it. My friend. God bless you. Thank 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 you. Adios. Love don't hang out in a grave.